Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is March the 28th, 2024. Let's talk baseball. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, everyone here knows I'm a supporter of sports betting. I don't see anything wrong with people betting on sports. I also think the sports leagues themselves, particularly baseball, needs to take a more sophisticated approach to betting on sports. Right? Understand there is a profound difference, and it's a profound difference between betting on your team where you're giving yourself a financial incentive to win the game versus betting against your team where you are giving yourself a financial incentive to throw the game. Right? If we were to learn that an athlete bet on his team, let's just say, in my opinion, the punishment should be far less the social stigma should be far less than if we were to hear that an athlete bet against his team. Right? Let's understand that. Now, baseball, because of the 1919 White Sox, has never figured this out. It's even worse than that. Baseball has a shroud of secrecy. So, Pete Rose... 4,256 hits. I can tell you he's one of the best players I've ever seen. Right? The Big Red Machine was one of the best teams I've ever seen. And Charlie Hustle, as he was known, batted leadoff. Right? This was a guy who at one point, I believe, had a 44-game hitting streak. Now, Pete Rose was manager of the Reds. And, of course, we came to learn that Pete bet on baseball. Now, I understand the argument. As a manager, it's possible that Pete Rose, with money on a game, could have burnt out his starters, could have gone to the bullpen and played the game like it was Game 7 of a World Series, simply because... He had a financial incentive to win that particular game. Okay, I can understand some purists, and Lord knows, baseball has that. Right? Bob Costas, Johnny Bench from the Big Red Machine. I can understand some purists saying, hey, you're violating the purity of the game. You're hurting the game's credibility. Okay, fine enough. Just understand that Pete, as a manager, is in a different position than the players, right? If a player is betting on their team, right, then really it can't be said that that player has decided to go to the bullpen a little bit early because he was afraid to lose the five-inning line, right? That's, you know, the player wouldn't have that power. Now, of course, the analysis changes completely, and I mean completely. If we were to find out that Pete Rose bet against the Reds, that'd be awful. As manager, that'd be awful. That would warrant a stiff fine, right? Perhaps the kind of sanction that Bart Giamatti gave Pete Rose, right? If we were to find out that Shohei Otani bet against the Angels, his team from last year, he's going to be a Dodger now, but... His team from last year were the Angels. If we find out that Otani bet against the Angels, he's going to be sanctioned heavily. You should expect for him to miss a full season. The reason this subject is relevant is we have something called Baseball Futures. This is the time of year where many of us are looking at teams. And let me just tell you, as a matter of course, because of their success, 
because of their revenue, because the Dodgers can fall out of bed and pull more than 2 million fans to their stadium over the course of a season, because their farm system is a plus, because they always have better pitching than 90% of the league. Right, The Dodgers right now are one of those teams that many gamblers, myself included, would strongly consider putting a futures on. Right, The other teams, just like in the Olympics, where you notice the teams getting the gold medal are the teams that either have huge countries, China for example, where they're picking from a talent pool of over a billion people, or they are the wealthiest countries. Right, the United States, Great Britain, right, they have the resources to throw an amateur, we'll put the word amateur in quotes, amateur athletes, that let's say countries with poor GDP, peace, simply don't have. Well, it's the same thing in baseball. If you're a better and you see a vibrant baseball culture in a big metropolis, which Los Angeles is, which the Dodgers are, Right, And if you see a tradition, you know, dating back decades of the team prioritizing pitching and farm systems, folks, Steve Garvey, who's in the runoff for the Senate in my state of California, he came up through the Dodger farm system. <laughs> you know, understand that farm system has been turning out great players for decades. Right? Understand, too, Garvey one year makes the All-Star game as a write-in. Right? The Dodgers, they're loaded. So let me just say, and I'm not talking about just the Walter Alston era. I'm talking about Tommy Lasorda. I'm talking about now. Right? But let me just say, this gambling scandal, which several people are trying to cover up, is the kind of thing that's going to impact the team. I've seen this before. Right? The players are going to want to talk about baseball. The LA Times, reporters, they're going to be around the team. And the question is going to come up about gambling. Maybe Otani's telling the truth. Maybe his interpreter, who was making less than six figures a year, maybe his interpreter got access to the most valuable things that Otani has, right? Otani's financial information. Otani, after all, is a millionaire. I'm supposed to believe that Otani comes to a foreign country has an interpreter who's helping him, you know, uh, interface with the public, interface with the media, right? That LA Times can be tough. Don't mess with Bill Plasky, right? They're going to ask tough questions. An athlete, if English is not their first language, is going to want a little help, and I think the public understands that interpreters can help, especially when there's an international game and you have a lot of people from different countries. Okay, great. But you want me to believe. And understand, folks, I, I run the Gambler's Advisory blog. You want me to believe that a bookie is going to be floating... Otani's interpreter, who's not earning $100,000 a year, millions of dollars, is going to be taking millions of dollars from the interpreter for the interpreter's own action. Folks, that's simply unbelievable. Let me just point out, too, the great Nick Bakai, and he is great. Remember that name. He has a show on cable called Bookie. It's one of the best things on cable. By the way, this is not a commercial for the show. I'm not making any money talking about Bookie. But understand, the minute you see Bookie, you understand <laughs> that 
a bookie is not going to float a guy who's earning less than $100,000, millions of dollars, to place bets. That's not the way it works. Let's go one step further. How believable is it that Otani, multimillionaire, decides to give his interpreter his financial account passcodes and access? Someone is wiring this bookie guy, Bowyer, I believe is his name, Matthew Bowyer, millions of dollars to place action, right? And I'm to believe that it's the interpreter, not the player who presumably would have inside information, would know who's injured, who's not, um, who is starting, who, you know, is in a slump, is living the life day to day. I'm supposed to believe that it's not the player placing the action. I'm supposed to believe that it's the interpreter and somehow the interpreter has full access, full access to Otani's financial accounts to the point where the money to the bookie is being wired. Right, folks, this seems a bit ridiculous to me. This doesn't seem believable to me. This is the kind of thing that's going to linger as the season goes along. Understand, too, the Dodgers, like every baseball team, are going to travel. Right? You could imagine how eager the New York City press. Or, let's talk sports rivals. The San Francisco press, right? Understand the Dodgers are viewed as rivals up here. There isn't a warm and fuzzy relationship between the Juan Marichal, <laughs> you know, Giants and the Dodgers. There just isn't, right? You can imagine when the Dodgers visit town, the San Francisco press is going to be out in force. Understand the level of scrutiny, too. In baseball, the best players, I mean the elites, can't hit 400 in a season. Right? Ted Williams is the last guy to do that. We're all hot and bothered because Tony Gwynn, George Brett, great hitters, Frank Thomas one year, were flirting with 400 before... Of course, the season shut down, right? And there was a strike. Leave it to baseball to pick that year to have a strike. Well, I need for folks to understand that the best players have slumps. Baseball's a marathon. It's 162 games. A guy can have an MVP season and can have a two-week stretch where he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat. Right? Guys are going to have problems. I've seen great pitchers, great pitchers, have awful games where they don't make it out of the first three innings. Right? I need for folks to understand that there's going to be a moment this year. You know it's coming. Where Otani, who's a great player, Hall of Fame level, Hall of Fame talent, right? He has to put in the longevity to actually deserve the Hall of Fame. But just to understand, there are going to be times this year where Otani is going to be less than himself. That's just the nature of baseball, right? There are going to be times where Otani is giving up runs from the mound, right? He's a pitcher and he's a hitter. That's going to double at least the level of scrutiny against him. If he has a bad outing from the mound, we're going to criticize him. Then the questions are going to pop up. Did he have money on this game? Just imagine if after the Pete Rose's gambling rumors came out, 
if Rose continued to manage the Reds back in the day. And let's say the Reds had a losing streak. Folks, it happens to the best teams. You can imagine the press wondering if Pete had any action on the games. Right? Understand, too, the level of investigation that's going to take place. The IRS is now involved. The Department of Homeland Security is now involved. Understand, early on, you wondered if people understood the seriousness of this. The interpreter actually came out at one point and said, hey, you know, Otani was just helping me pay off some action I laid. My words, not the interpreter's words, right? Well, just understand that now Otani is coming out through representatives and he, of course, is saying, hey, I didn't pay off any debts. I'm a victim of threat. Understand, there are financial records, according to reports, that show money coming out of Otani's account and going to this bookie. Let's talk about the bookie, too. Now, folks, we've all seen the ads. We understand <laughs> We understand that highly reputable casinos in Las Vegas, the MGM, for example, right now have online apps where you can, in Las Vegas or in the state of Nevada, you can actually take out the app and you can place a bet. Right now, the MGM reputable publicly traded company they're not going to try to blackmail you later. They're not going to say, hey man, look, I know you've paid your debts, but I need a little bit extra money. I'm a bookie. You're a multimillionaire athlete who makes a lot from endorsements. How would your companies feel? How would your employer feel? How would Major League Baseball feel? If I were to divulge that you've been paying me millions of dollars to lay action on Major League Baseball games. Right, folks, that's the risk with using a private bookie. Figure it out. The reason why many people bet with MGM and other licensed casinos in Vegas is they understand by betting with a reputable publicly traded company or highly thought of privately held casino in Las Vegas, again, licensed by the state, the casino can't start strong-arming you for money you don't owe them. Now, let me just sound ridiculous here. This Otani story, aren't you troubled that they're using a Matthew Bowyer? I mean, folks, the bets could have been laid at Vegas casinos. Let me just tell you, too, how, you know, you can actually comply with the law. Let's say Otani goes to Vegas. He's hanging out. He's enjoying his offseason. He's talking to a buddy, and he could tell the buddy, Hey, look, man, I, I really think... This year, based on what I've seen, that the Atlanta Braves have a great team, right? Anytime they're at home and they're playing a sub-500 team or a team that, you know, has played three games in the prior four days, uh, or they're playing a team and, um, you know, it's not the ace of their rotation, or even the second guy. Place action on them for me. Right? Understand. Otani could then leave the state. The action could be placed at a Las Vegas casino. Right? Why does the Otani story here involve a Matthew Bowyer? A guy who isn't a licensed Las Vegas 
casino. Aren't you troubled? Let me tell you too, that in situations like this, and I know we don't see them right now, but in situations like this, there are always loose threads. Right? Again, I'm not saying Otani is lying. What I am saying is parts of the story are very hard to believe. Right? Do you believe that Otani, mid-career, has just taken up gambling as a hobby? Folks, if there are people in Japan who recall Otani betting on sports or talking to them about placing bets on his behalf, that kind of information is going to come out. Let me just say, too, there are other areas of interest. I heard the Otani contract, and I thought, wow, that's odd. But then I thought, you know what? Some athletes, Tom Brady comes to mind, some athletes will defer some money to help the team financially so the team can feel the best team possible, right? I believe Pat Mahomes has one of these deals. So I heard the Otani deal and I thought, wow, so he really doesn't get paid that much early. He's getting paid on the back end, right? This had a little bit of Bobby Bonilla. Uh, as an inspiration for the deal, it seemed like to me, right? Not to suggest that Bobby Bonilla has an interpreter who is laying millions of dollars of action uh, to bookies who aren't licensed by the state of Nevada, right? Well, just to understand, one wonders whether the structuring of the Otani deal was done unbeknownst to the Dodgers, with the idea that if Otani were to get suspended for a year, if he's not making that much money on the front end, that suspension wouldn't hurt him as bad. Haven't we seen this in the NFL with Deshaun Watson? When Watson was about to be suspended, wasn't he making less that year? than he would make in later years. Right now, it's possible that completely by chance, Otani signed a backloaded deal to help the team, right? But understand, in situations like this, there's always that alternative narrative, right? You see it in these criminal cases. Right? Why did the guy enter the store with the gun? Right? Oh, because he feared for his safety, not because he was planning on robbing the place. Right? Just to understand Otani, curiously, unusually, took a deal where rather than get a signing bonus, the big guarantee, a lot of money up front. Right? He has the money in the back. Right? He's not making a lot now. Of course, it's a very long-term deal. Conceivably, if he were to get suspended for a year, he wouldn't lose the average annual amount of his contract because it's backdated. So, Let's talk about conspiracies, just hypothetically. Again, I'm not accusing anyone of lying here, right? Although we realize everyone can't be telling the truth, right? Because the statements from the interpreter who's making less than $100,000 a year directly contradict the statements of Otani's representatives who claim that Otani knew nothing about the gambling, wasn't giving money to pay uh, Matthew Bauer, uh, the uh, bookie, uh, that Otani is a victim of theft, not giving money to a friend so the friend can pay his debts. L let's put it in perspective. We're talking about millions of dollars. The interpreter 
is supposed to have somehow got in debt uh, more than 10 times his annual salary, if you believe the story. Right? So, as a futures better. Gamblers are my core audience. As a futures better, you need to look at the Dodgers and you need to realize that with all this talent, there's going to be, at least for the first half of this year, a lot of controversy. Right? The Braves, believe it or not, might be the better play here on March the 28th, 2024. Let's see how this rolls out. If Otani has done anything wrong, let's hope he's smart enough to admit it up front. Right? As Richard Nixon found out in an earlier generation, it's the cover-up that's often worse than the crime. Right? If Otani did anything wrong, he needs to acknowledge it now, very early in the season. I understand they've played a couple of games already. Very early in the season. He needs to acknowledge it now to protect his team from the circus. He needs to take the hit. Talk with Major League Baseball. Have your representatives talk. Agree to sit out the season. He can even put his spin on it. Tell us, the fans, look, I did bet on baseball. But I never bet against my team. Right? Be open. Nip it in the bud. If he does that in the next 10 days, the Dodgers have a chance. If he doesn't, Chavez Ravine is going to be a circus this year, right? The Dodgers, who, let's face it, have a hard time, have a hard time even without scandals like this, winning in the postseason, are going to have an even harder time this year. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours. I hope you leave them in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.